SpaceX has quite a few plans for their in-the-works Starship launch system, whether it's a shuttle to the moon, massive cargo vehicle, rocket refuel station, Mars lander, airplane, or quite a bit more, there's a lot already on the table. As SpaceX continues to produce Starship prototypes at a breakneck pace, we'll likely see growing use cases and a greater variety of potential variants. With some already mentioned by the team at SpaceX, there are fewer unknowns than many of SpaceX's other ventures. Plus, with Starship gradually reaching towards an active status, we're likely to see even more details revealed by the company as more becomes finalized. Luckily, that includes space tourism, a quickly growing market. When asked by a reporter about future launches like Inspiration4, Benji Reed, the senior director of human spaceflight programs at SpaceX, said the company has already seen interest for both Dragons and Starships, which is pretty exciting. We'd have to agree with him, especially considering just how big space tourism could be. Estimates say the 2020 market alone was valued at around $900 million, even before the several launches in 2021. After all, we've had Blue Origin launch two crewed space flights already, one Virgin Galactic flight and the entire Inspiration4 mission, all of which were massive boosts to the market. Something that once graced the mind of everyone interested in space gradually disappeared before being brought back to the limelight with the recent space race. Considering Reed's comment on the growing interest for crew dragons and starships, there's really quite a bit of momentum going for not only the concept, but SpaceX's part specifically. Even though Starship isn't commercially available or even out of the prototype phase, there are already enough people interested in purchasing a ticket aboard the giant stainless steel Goliath to ride to space. But how can space tourism work for a launch vehicle that doesn't even exist yet? Well, the answer is surprisingly well. Although Starship doesn't quite exist yet, there are already a few things pointing toward the ship being a heavy lifter for space tourism. From its planned 100-seat capacity to the sheer payload volume of the beast, SpaceX could easily create a tourism-based option rather than an interplanetary variant. And anyway, if the company's CEO Elon Musk plans to take Starship to the Moon and Mars, what's stopping it from taking a few customers around the world? Not surprisingly, the current issue is cost. And not even in a terrible sense. Taking another bit of information from SpaceX, the company's director of vehicle integration, Christopher Kalouris, mentioned briefly that SpaceX's reused Falcon 9 missions bring launches to below $30 million per launch. More specifically, he said it costs $28 million to launch it. And that's with everything. At $28 million, SpaceX could afford to charge four passengers $7 million each to break even. While that seems quite expensive, Forbes says there are nearly 3,000 billionaires with a combined $13 trillion worldwide. Seven million is pocket change to these people, especially when you realize it's 0.7% of the least valuable person's net worth. Plus, we're not even talking about Starship. The current Falcon 9 launch cost is expected to be much higher than the final Starship. With hopes for launch costs to bottom out at $2 million, Starship sits at 1 14th the price of a Falcon 9, at least in terms of launching. At $2 million, SpaceX could charge people $50,000 each and push out a 60% net profit margin. And, well, with 52 million people around the world worth over $1 million, that's quite a potential audience. After all, many are likely to spend 5% of their net worth on a potentially life-changing experience. Have you seen how much people spend on a Disney World vacation? Anyway, how could Starship itself handle space tourism? All the quick financial spots are more about how SpaceX's wallet could handle tourism. What about the actual Starship? According to SpaceX, a Starship crew configuration could push out enough space for up to 100 people from Earth into low Earth orbit all the way to the Moon or Mars. All with private cabins, common areas, storage, solar storm shelters, and a viewing gallery. For starters, the first Starship tourism trips aren't likely going to need, well, really any of that. Potentially excluding the cabins or the common viewing areas, SpaceX could quickly ditch ideas for centralized storage, shelters, and much more. That would easily make enough room for 100 people, at least according to the company, if not even more. If the furthest you're going is orbit at first, there's really no need for quite a bit of the space to be taken up by things that aren't necessary to travel to orbit. SpaceX would likely be able to do with just cabins and viewing areas. 
and there would obviously be oxygen reserves, pressurization, and a wide array of life support systems. But not nearly to an extent like a trip to the moon or Mars. There's really no need for food or water, other than for snacks and drinks. No need for storage, as the trip would take a few hours. And no need for shelters or the like, as Earth's atmosphere and magnetosphere would keep everyone on board safe. All in all, a suborbital or orbital Starship crew configuration could quickly increase the onboard capacity while making the build much cheaper. SpaceX could easily give 100 passengers around 10 cubic meters as their own private cabin, with a vast over 1,000 cubic meters of volume to take advantage of. For reference, while it might not seem too significant, 10 cubic meters is enough to create a stack of boxes 2 meters tall, 2.5 meters long, and 2 meters wide. That's around 6.5 feet by 6.5 by around 8 and a fifth, also known as quite a bit of space, especially for a flight just a few hours long. And that'd ignore the potential to put between one and three extra people in there. But you see, that's only for suborbital and orbital flights. There's so much more that could be done if Starship makes the leap into space. SpaceX has the chance to invent Moon and Mars flyby tourism, although obviously only if they actually do it. Nevertheless, there are quite a few possibilities for how the company can take advantage of this, especially if many people don't realize the opportunities within Earth's atmosphere. SpaceX has already discussed their crewed variants of Starship, which would be sent to the Moon and Mars and city-to-city -city variants, although not much has been discussed in terms of touristy Starship launches. That's even with one of the company's directors explicitly mentioning interest in Starship-based space tourism. SpaceX has the chance to make a lot of money and history along the way, whether it's with cheaper orbital launches or more expensive out-of-this-world launches to the Moon or Mars. In addition, the amount of money brought by cheaper flights with any of the 52 million millionaires and expensive flights with several of the roughly 3,000 billionaires could really build up SpaceX's space arsenal. There are chances for greater inventions, larger rockets, lower costs, more significant leaps in technology, and who knows what else. Even against competitors like Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic or Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, the technological and cost advantages of the future Starship are still enough to keep SpaceX in a league of its own. I mean, the whole system's planned to be taller than the Saturn V rocket and SLS system, in addition to being heavier, hold way more pressurized space, and provide much higher thrust, all on top of being cheaper for tourists to board, faster to launch, and reusable. With future innovations from SpaceX in the form of Mechazilla or a portable landing platform, the company could even make launches and landings safer and more efficient, turning the entire process into a more straightforward and faster one. One day, we might have SpaceX terminals, where you can take a likely not physical ticket, board a recently constructed and fueled Starship, then take off to enjoy your orbital flight alongside 100 other people. It's an exciting concept. Although there's obviously still a lot to come, we've gotten much more information on SpaceX's plans for colony-based trips and cargo launches, but there hasn't been much else on Starship as a tourism device. Hopefully, though, the mentions of Starship interest alongside the current Crew Dragon configuration, growing interest in space tourism, and fast innovations will make this something that we'll eventually be able to enjoy. And so, what do you think? Would the success of the automatically piloted Inspiration4 and all the potential for Starship to bring untrained tourists to space, can we look forward to seeing a SpaceX-themed tour to space anytime soon? Or will the company first focus on getting us back to the moon and then to Mars? There's a lot that can happen in the next few years, and the only one to know for sure is SpaceX. So, let us know your thoughts below, and feel free to check out one of our other space videos in the meantime.